Apart from a few broken ones, the ThinkPad X61s remains the oldest and the weakest ThinkPad in my fleet, and yet it is my most favorite. Since the time I adopted it, it has pushed me to change several elements in my computing workflow and it continues to do so. I heard about Wayland first back in 2013 but always stayed with the convention which was XOR as that was the ecosystem I was comfortable with. Then when I first switched out of a full-fledged distribution like Fedora to a do-it-yourself distribution like Arch, with all the new things I learned and explored, that was my chance to give it a shot. But thanks to Nvidia, I could never step out of XOR. I could have switched to Wayland on my non-NVIDIA machines, but my preference to configure all machines identically limited me to XOR. Besides, the software packages in the parallel world of Wayland weren't exactly coinciding with that of XOR either, so scripting two different kinds of configs was something I wasn't prepared for. But then I picked up the X61S, which being as slow as it was, I was prepared to take extreme steps to get as much performance out of it as I could. Now except for the web browser which you can barely do anything about, the rest of my tools have been pretty basic and lightweight. I use i3wm as the window manager in place of a desktop environment and I do not even use a display manager but instead have my machine start on the TTY. But then out of curiosity and with all the reading about how Wayland is supposed to be efficient with its relatively newer code base, I finally took the leap. Fast forward to today, my setup looks very different such that it supports Xorg and Wayland both and also has a few parallel software packages for either. Thankfully, it's been running great for a year or more with Sway running on most machines and i3wm on the ones with NVIDIA GPUs. Long story short, the X61 has pushed me to defeat my mental block and explore the world of Wayland. Much of the modern software that we use today is pretty heavy on resources and this is more noticeable on older hardware, especially on machines with lesser number of CPU cores. One such software tool that I had to replace along with the switch from XOR to Wayland was my terminal emulator. When you do not have a resource crunch, you do not mind using GPU acceleration within your terminal emulator. And that was exactly my case as I had never encountered any significant performance issue with any of my machines. But then as a part of the initiative to find lightweight terminal emulators, I switched from Kitty to RxVD Unicode for Exorc and Foot for Wayland. I did miss a couple of things here and there in the start, but then when I had it all configured the way I wanted, my setup worked great for me. Whether it be Chrome or Firefox or any other modern browser, all these tools are pretty resource hungry. Running a resource monitor, the software that shows up on the top of the list when sorted from highest to lowest in terms of CPU and memory usage is often the web browser. There are lighter alternatives, but either they're still a derivative of Chromium or Firefox, or otherwise not as usable as the mainstream browsers. I find running Chromium instead of Firefox on these weak machines way easier. And that's exactly what I do now on the X61S. No matter how many upgrades you make on a machine that's 17 years old, there's always going to be that one bottleneck that you cannot do anything about. The X61S cannot utilize the read-write speed of even an old SATA 3 solid-state drive. Nor can it possibly use all the 8 GBs of DDR2 RAM I've put on it. The 1.6 GHz Core to Duo processor causes the machine to struggle for the lightest of tasks that modern machines do not even break a sweat for. But then there's something I call the settling time, after which the required programs are in memory there isn't a lot going on in the CPU either, that is when the machine feels to start getting usable. It does hit the saturation every now and then, but 
This state is the state I found to be the most usable for a machine like this. These machines from the past are almost two decades old. And while there's still a lot of charm in them, using them for your daily tasks needs some effort. Some of it comes in terms of programs you run on those. And the rest is all about setting the right expectations in order to enjoy these beauties in the best way you can. These were built for a different time and one needs to learn how to appreciate them for how they can be still of service today in whatever limited capacity they can be. That's all that I have for this video. Thanks for watching it till the end. May the maker watch over you. See you in the next video.